Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 11th. As many of you that watched last week's show know, I called a point spread of three points, the Giants winning by three points in the Super Bowl, and challenged anybody to try to beat me on this. And if they did, I would uh, let them determine some of the subjects for the following show. Well, as uh, the fates would have it, a Smyrna Cowboy picked four over, he picked the Giants winning by four, and uh, you had to pick it exact to be able to beat me because I was off by one point. So he did, and he sent in three possible subjects, so we will do the first two of those three subjects he sent in. First off, he wanted me to talk about the Suzuki, not Suzuki, the uh, comp competitor to Suzuki coming out by BMW, the BM 2012 BMW C650 GT. And... Uh, I looked it over and compared it to the Bergman. It's uh, The Bergman was a one-of-a-kind until uh, this came on the deal. And uh, let's just look at a few specs here. The uh, you're looking at For me, when you're looking at a scooter, you're always looking at storage space because that's what scooters are good at. You've got a 56-liter trunk in the Bergman versus they call it about 60-liter trunk space in the BMW. So let's call it 59 just to be uh, more accurate probably. So you're talking about... Uh, Roughly equivalent, 56 versus 59. Horsepower, Suzuki Bergman, 54 horsepower versus 60 horsepower for the BMW. Probably noticeable if you do jump on both bikes and, and test them side by side, but then you have to debate, is 54 horsepower enough? I mean, for that size bike, it probably is. So, yeah, you gain some performance, but... Um, are you really losing anything by going with the 54 horsepower Bergman? Weight, the BMW beats it a little bit too. You're talking about 35 pounds difference, maybe 613 for the Bergman versus 575 for the BMW. Uh, seat height, the Bergman's a little bit lower, so if you've got stubby legs, though, I think the Bergman wins there. You get 29.5 inch seat height versus 30.7, so you gain a little bit over an inch that way. Uh, Gas mileages, I would say roughly equivalent. The Bergman's rated at 39, but most Bergman riders say they get mid-40s easily. Um, the BMW is, uh, the specs say 50 miles per gallon uh, on their test, but that's always generous when a dealer gives you their test. It's probably a dynamometer or a test track, so I would say probably both bikes, I would say call it, call it mid-40s. Manufacturer suggested retail price. Now, even though it's a 2012 model and we're well into 2012, there's still, I have not found any official price release, but on a BMW fan site, they said the, the BMW D people talk about a target price of around 14 grand that they want to release it to the United States. So you're talking manufacturer suggested retail price for Bergman, just under 10 grand versus 14 grand for the BMW. So you're going to have to decide, is it $4,000 more worth of bike to you? Um, it is made, the BMW will be made in Germany, so it's not like it's going to be made somewhere else. So you probably will get that German quality and everything, but I don't know. I'd call it a Chevy versus Cadillac decision. I have, uh, myself, if I was in the market for a, a scooter of that size, I'm more the Chevy kind of guy. I consider 40, 54 horsepower is probably more than enough for me. So I would tend to go with the Bergman, but that's me. If you're into BMW and the craftsmanship and the uh, uh, fit and finish, yeah, maybe you could say uh, BMW offers something for the extra four grand. So that's my comparison of that. And second, uh, Dave Smyrna Cowboy wanted me to talk about e-scooters. Now he sent me a link to this place called EvolveMotorcycles.com, which evidently does seem to be at least soon to be selling. They're taking pre-orders for this uh, for four different models of scooter. They also have a motorcycle available too. But I'm going to give you the link and concentrate on the scooters down here. Uh, the prices. Uh, are still not directly competitive. I mean, you're talking about for the small scooters, 2,900 and 3,100 would be the city scooters, about 30 miles per hour, range of about uh, 100 miles or so, I guess. No, range of about 40 miles, actually. And then you're talking about the highway scooters. Um, you're talking about 3,900 and $5,400 for them. Uh, a little more speed. I mean, you can get up to 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour for them, but um, still not a really huge range. I mean, you're talking 50 miles for the $3,900 model, and you're talking, uh, uh, what are we talking, 50 miles for the $5,400. So you're still not even talking any of them reaching 100 miles in range. Um, I think the thing that will scare most people off is it looks to me that there's it's not going to be like 
these things will be distributed at local dealerships. It looks like you'll pay for your pre-order, you'll pay for the bike and the freight. So this thing will be sent to you. Uh, lots of luck if the thing has a problem or breaks down or something. It's going to be a, a nightmare because you're not going to be able to take it down to your local dealership. Um, basically, price needs to come down a little bit more. Uh, some local dealerships you can go to for problems need to be available, but I still think scooters are going to be cutting edge for at least the next 10, if not 20 years, just because of the basic design. I mean, under the seat, you've got cavernous space that you don't have with motorcycles, and you do need lots of batteries. I mean, it would be nice if the equivalent of one car battery could power a motorcycle to any kind of power and range, but it just don't work that way. You need three or four of those put together to give you the power and range, and you need storage space for that, and the scooter is where it's at. I mean, it's it's made for storage space. Motorcycles, yeah, maybe if you redesign them a bit they could do it too, but right now the clunky designs I've seen where people have tried to modify motorcycles to run on electric, um, not really fetching to the eye, so I think people still are caring about what it looks like, what they're riding, so to that extent it's going to be a while before motorcycles will uh, catch up and, and be able to do that as well as scooters and as easily as scooters, so yeah. Switching to two wheels and electric scooters will, I think, be on the cutting edge of that, at least for, for some time to come. And last up, I want to talk about the NASA Mars uh, Science Lab. Uh, the rover inside the craft is called Curiosity, and as of Friday, they were halfway on the journey to Mars. And as um, nature and fates would have it, we had that solar flare a couple of weeks ago, if you remember. Well, the one test they are running all the way to Mars on the trip is a radiation meter so that they can actually determine what cosmic radiation is like and what exposure to astronauts would be like on a manned trip to Mars. Well, one of the best tests you could have is somewhere in the mid-range have a, a cosmic uh, uh, radiation burst from the sun to be able to see what the astronauts are going to have to deal with. And by golly, they actually got what they, uh, the best kind of test you can because it's a real world test. And uh, the reason why you want to do it this way too, instead of just measuring cosmic radiation, you want to measure it inside a craft, is because you have secondary radiation. As cosmic rays hit a craft, they produce secondary radiation by hitting the metals and the various materials in the craft. And some of those secondary radiation effects can be even worse than being exposed to cosmic radiation directly. So they're still parsing the data, but they say this is going to be an excellent, excellent test to be able to know how to deal with it in the real world when you have human beings traveling to Mars. So sometimes the fates just have it that way to where it works out for you. And I want to let you know um, I will probably take less of a break this summer because this thing is scheduled to arrive at Mars around August 5th. So I want to keep updates going on the TDD report because we're all about science and technology and I know a lot of you are science geeks like I am so um, I will probably take a break during June and July as usual but I'll probably be coming back early in August for this and keeping updates going of uh, anything that's happening with the uh, Mars Curiosity rover hopefully it will touch down safely and be functioning for years to come for us doing explorations on Mars so that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week